Hi everybody, my name is Michael Darby. I'm with Element in our Connected Technologies division. I'm often asked to talk about radio modules and what do you do if you install a radio module into your host product so that you can sell a connected product. So I'm just going to take a few minutes of your time to talk about this at a very high level here and try and give you some top tips. I think one of the first tips I would try and say is anybody putting a product on the market is fully responsible for that product including everything inside it and that might be a radio module. The second top tip I would say is to try and remember to separate the two topics testing and approvals. They're not the same thing. They're often discussed in the same terms and we, we sort of talk about them together but they're not the exact same thing. If you just do some testing of your product it doesn't mean you can immediately sell it and if your product is approved it's only going to be okay as long as you're selling it in the way that you uh, intended it to be. So testing and approvals slightly different topics and I'll talk some more about that now. Let's start off in the North American region the FCC of the USA and I said Canada. Radio transmitters require product certification. So that certification doesn't just mean I passed some tests. You do the testing and it passes and that's great. The certification is more like a, a registration of the transmitter. You've got all the technical details. You've got the schematic diagrams, the parts lists, the block diagrams, technical data, rated power. All of that information must be checked and uploaded to the FCC and ICED Canada. And it's listed on their website and you have a certification number, such as an FCC ID and an IC number. So a radio transmitter is certified for use in North America and if you were to take that radio transmitter and modify the hardware or permanently install it inside some other thing, then the certification of that transmitter is void. However, if you have a radio transmitter which is specifically intended to be installed in something else, it's possible to get a special type of certification on it and it's called a modular approval. So it's a radio certification but the modular approval certification gives that module superpowers and its superpower is that you can install it into something else and its certification remains valid. The whole point of this, therefore, is that if you take a radio module that has been certified and you install it into a hundred different types of product, all of those different types of product don't need to go and get their own certification. The transmitter hardware and the data and the details of the transmitter has already been registered with the FCC in Canada by the module, transmit, uh, the module manufacturer and therefore the end product doesn't need the registration. It still needs to pass all the tests or the manufacturer has to have the confidence that it could pass all those tests but they don't need to certify it. So the installer of the radio module will need to do some testing to check that their end product with the module in it will still pass. And this is your EMC emissions but also the transmitter performance. If your installation has changed any of those things, the classic being transmitter radiated spurious emissions. So the manufacturer therefore has to do some testing but does not need to do the certification because the module is certified. There isn't a definitive list of tests that you must do when installing the module and there isn't a definitive list of tests that you don't have to do. It's the manufacturer of the end product's decision and they can contact a company like Element and ask to ask us for advice on that. Um, but then, of course, the end product gets sold. Now, if the module gets modified in some way, it might be possible to modify the certification of the module. Or, in some cases, it might be that the end product does require a certification. For example, if the end product is worn against the body or for portable use, or if um, uh, you've changed the hardware of it, then the end product might require a certification. But in most cases, if you haven't modified the module or its antenna or its use case, the end product does not require recertification because the module uh, has already taken care of that. Now let's head across the Atlantic Ocean to Europe. And when I say Europe, I mean the European Union and also Great Britain in the UK. We don't have certification here. We have declaration of conformity. 
The CE marking to the radio equip equipment directive is all um, declaration of conformity by the manufacturer of whoever is putting a product on the market. So if you place a radio product onto the market, you CE mark it to the radio equipment directive, or the RED. If you take that radio product and install it into something else, you've created a new thing. And the manufacturer of that new thing needs to CE mark and DOC their product to the RED. There is no modular approvals. There's no certification. There's no certification of a radio, and therefore there's no certification to transfer over. And the DOC of a radio doesn't transfer over because that doesn't make sense either. So why would you even CE mark a radio or a radio module that's intended to be put into something else? Well, really, the only purpose is to... Well, two parts, really. Firstly, to give your customer base some confidence. But secondly, if you want to sell that module in Europe, well, the module needs to have a CE mark because it's a radio equipment. So the module will be CE marked to allow the module to be sold. You then buy that module, install it into your new product, you have a new product now, the CE mark of the module doesn't transfer over, you're looking at a new product. But the test results of the module might be applicable. Again, testing, approvals, separate topics. So the manufacturer of the end product might choose to accept some test results from the radio module if they're happy with it and if they're happy that they have not affected those things. Safety and EMC immunity are always retested at the end product level. But for the radio performance parts, the non-radiated tests and conducted antenna port, the manufacturer of the end product might choose to accept some of those results from the module. Again, there is not a definitive list of tests which must be done and there is not a definitive list of tests that don't have to be done. The installer needs to have a good look at that and think, which tests do I need to do? We see, we see a real split, really, in mindsets and uh, approaches to business here. Some companies will say, I want to minimize my time at the lab, so I'm going to really scrutinize the results of the module and how my product is created, and I'm going to do the minimum amount of testing necessary. And this, I'm talking here now about North America and Europe. And so some companies will really put a lot of thought uh, and a lot of planning into reducing their time in the lab. Other manufacturers will say, I don't want to take that risk, or I haven't got that time, or I haven't even got that expertise. Stick the module in, let's repeat everything. Whichever route you take, you'll find that time to market is the most critical thing. So I hope this has helped. Um, I hope this has given you a starting point, and of course, you have us to contact if you need any more questions answered. So uh, my name is Michael. I'm here at Element. Please get in touch if you have any questions. Thanks for tuning in and listening, and uh, I hope to speak to you all soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.